Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome back to another episode of PyTest Basics. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about PyTest caches. So in our previous video on fixtures, we talked a little bit about caching and scope. So we showed how we could say, set the scope for a fixture, and then our fixture would only run once within that scope. And then all the other tests requesting that fixture within that scope would reuse that same value. Now, this was a really useful thing and it gave us some amount of caching within a singular PyTest session. However, we're often running PyTest multiple times. So we have multiple PyTest invocations, therefore multiple PyTest sessions. So we're still wasting a lot of time, say doing some sort of expensive initialization every single time we run PyTest. Now, one of the things we can do to help out with this and make this less of a problem is by using the PyTest cache. Right? And this allows us to save values between uh, PyTest invocations and reuse them. So we're going to look at a simple example of how we can do this today. And we'll start out by opening up our testcaches.py file. So this is just going to contain our very simple test, which we've seen many times before. So we have our square function, which just squares a number. And then we have our test for our square function called test square. Now our test square is going to request some expensive value fixture. So let's say this is a fixture that's going to do some sort of expensive computation that you know we may not want to run across multiple different PyTest invocations. We may want to run it, say, once in that first PyTest invocation and then just cache that value so that every time we run PyTest again, we can just read the value from our cache rather than regenerating it. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. And we're going to take a look at our fixture, which is going to be in our conftest.py file. So inside of here, we have, say, two Python functions. We have a function called expensive computation, and this is really just going to be our placeholder for some expensive computation that we might want to cache uh, the result of. Now, in this case, it's just going to generate a random number, um, but this is really just a placeholder. It's some expensive computation that we don't want to run multiple times. And then we have our fixture, right? Our expensive value fixture. And this is really what's going to be working with our cache and calling this expensive computation function. So our expensive value fixture is going to request um, this request fixture. And this is what we're going to access our PyTest cache through. So the first thing we're going to do in this fixture is try to access the value from our cache. So we're going to say, you know, value is equal to request.config.cache.get. And we're going to try to get our expensive value from our cache, right? Um, now in this case, right, since we haven't run this before, it's not going to exist in our cache. So we're just going to get this default of none return. So our value will be none here. On subsequent iterations, however, we'll end up getting our expensive value, right? Which is just what we're calling our value in our cache. Okay, so after we try to access our cache, if we didn't get a value from our cache, if it didn't exist in there for some reason, uh, maybe we haven't run this before, or we've cleared our cache. Um, we're going to fall into this if statement here, where we'll print generating uh, expensive value. Then we're going to get our value from our expensive computation. And then we're going to set it inside of our cache so that you know later PyTest invocations will have access to it when they try to run this test, or, or rather when they run this fixture. So. Here, we're just going to do request.config.cache.set expensive value equal to our value that we just got from our expensive computation. Then the last thing our fixture, of course, does is it returns our value to our test, right? Our test square down here. So just as a brief recap of what happened here, we try to access our cache first. If we didn't get the value, we generate it and set it in our cache. If we did get the value, we just return the value. Okay. So let's go ahead and see how this looks. So we'll go ahead and quit out of here. So we'll just run pytest dash, uh, or pytest test caches.py and we'll run it with dash s so we can see that print. And we see on the first invocation of this test, we get our print generating an expensive value, right? So we're trying to access our cache, um, you know, pytest or we didn't find anything inside of our cache, right? Our, our value was none. And so we had to generate that value. So we got that print statement. But on subsequent iterations uh, or subsequent invocations of PyTest, so if we try to run our test again, we see we no longer get that print because we set it inside of our cache in that first invocation here. So no matter how many times we run it now, um, 
we're not going to see that print because we're just accessing a value inside of our cache. Okay, so another thing we can do is we can see the contents of our cache. So we can do pytest dash dash cache dash show. And we can see all the things inside of our cache. And we see here our expensive value contains the value of six here, right? So that's the value that is being accessed inside of our cache uh, or being accessed from our fixture inside of our cache. All right. So the next thing we can do is we can, of course, say clear out our cache. So um, there are times where we want to just refresh everything, run our fixtures again, generate some new values. So we can run PyTest again, right? Say run our test again, but we can run it with dash dash cache dash clear, and this will clear out our cache um, before our test runs or before our fixtures run. So we go ahead and run this again. We see generating an expensive value. And in fact, every single time we run it with cache clear, we'll always see this generating an expensive value because we're always clearing our cache ahead of running our fixtures. So if we go ahead and run cache show again, we see that instead of the value six, now we're seeing the value zero, right? Because we're just generating some random number here. Okay. So that's some basics on how to work with the PyTest cache. It can be very useful for caching things across PyTest invocations. As always, I'll link to the official PyTest documentation on caches at docs.pytest.org. I have that up on the right-hand side of the screen. You can find any of these examples at github.com slash copy before arch. And all of these will be under repositories and then under PyTest. And then I've written a number of guides on PyTest as well. So you can find the one on PyTest caches. Um, under the PyTest Guide repository. And I'll link that below this video as well. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this time. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.